that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning as well to our online viewers as well as our Facebook viewers as well. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And if you are glad that God has woke you up this morning, started you on your way, let's give him some praise on today in his sanctuary in this house of prayer. But he has brought us another day. 
as we just reflect on how God has been so good and gracious to us, we just want to say thank you, God, on this morning because you are mighty and you're worthy of the praise. And so as we usher in the spirit of the Lord on today, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you and we love you. We do give your name the thanks. We ask, Lord, that you rest, rule, and abide in this holy place. We ask that your spirit be manifested through us. Lord, we ask, God, that you be with our pastor as he preaches your holy word. We ask that you be with the choir as we sing songs of Zion unto your name. Lord, we just ask that you be with those that are on their way into the sanctuary, those that are on their way to the church. We ask that you be with them, lead God, and direct them. So we thank you and we love you. As in Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. I feel your spirit all over me. I feel your spirit all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul. And down in my feet, oh, I feel your spirit all over me. Help me sing. I feel your presence all over me. I feel your presence all over me. It's in my hands, in my soul, and down in my feet. Oh, I feel your presence all over me. Help me say. God is moving. 
that it is now. Down in my that can describe who God is. Some may say he's great. Some may say he's wonderful. But we say this morning he's awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I am weak and forever he will reign. Hide me from the rain. My God is heals me when I'm broken. Gives strength when I am weak. Forever He will reign. My God is He can. My God is awesome. Oh, He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He is awesome. My God is awesome. Oh, He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He is awesome. My God is awesome. Church, he's great. He's great. In spite of it all, he is great. He is awesome. My God is awesome. He is my deliverer. 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 He is awesome. My provider, 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 he is awesome. My God is awesome. He's my protector, protector, 
protect him, protect him. He is awesome. My God is awesome. He's my healer. He's my healer. Healer, healer. He is awesome. My God is awesome. My God is. His stripes are here. My God is awesome. My God is Our morning prayer this morning will be led by our trustee, Mary James, as she will come. And as she's coming, we, we want to, uh, those that may have heard and have not heard, um, our dearly beloved uh, Janice Austin um, has transitioned over to glory. And we want to pray for her sons and her entire family uh, this morning. And so we ask Sister James that she would include that family uh, certainly in um, our prayers as we pray corporately together. Dear God, my church family, visitors, those who are on the prayer line, those who are watching through media this morning, Father, we boldly come before thy throne of grace, thanking you, giving you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us of all sins that we have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. Father, we ask this morning that you keep the bereaved in mind. Father, all who are bereaved. And the family of our sister, Janice Austin, please keep them in your loving arms of protection. Give them the comfort that they need and let them know, Father, that all of all is well. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the bereaved all over our nation, Lord. Bless the sick. Bless the shut-in. Bless those who are just going through, Father. Bless those who are just going through. Father, we ask that you touch hearts and minds of our national leaders. Bless hearts and minds of those of us everywhere, Lord. Help us not to be mean and hateful to each other. Help us to show others the love and the kindness that you give to each of us and let us share that with each other. Father, we thank you for letting us see another day, for giving us another chance to do better than we did before. We thank you, Father. Father, we ask that you give us the courage, the strength, the wisdom, everything that we need, Lord, in order to, in order to just repent, Father. In order to repent and do your holy and your righteous will. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for being the awesome God that you are. Father, we just ask that you bless our family, our children. Just bless everybody everywhere, Father. And Father, bless those who have asked us to pray for them 
and bless those who have asked us to pray for others, for them. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being so understanding, for being so loving, so forgiving. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for everlasting life. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for indwelling in each of us. And Lord, as our pastor gives us the words that you have given to him today, please touch his mind and his heart, Lord. Protect him. Give him strength. Give him the wisdom that he needs to share your word with us. And Father, as we move forward, bless our choir. Bless our choirs who are each and every Sunday here to encourage, to inspire, to motivate us, Lord. Keep them in your loving arms of protection, Lord. Touch their voices, Lord, as you have in the past, and we know that you will continue to do. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do in each of our lives. As we enter the sanctuary to worship and as we depart to serve, all these blessings we thank you for in the precious name of your son, Jesus the Christ. And in Jesus the Christ's name, I pray. Greetings, St. Timothy Church family, Pastor Jackson, Pastor Kern. The announcements for the morning are as follows. <coughs> Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this, will, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through, 16 through 18. Join us on Wednesday at noon by dialing 712 432 8399 and enter pass code 795209. Continued prayers for our beloved members who are ill and or recovering from surgery, Arbilia Carruthers, to be added to the sick and shut in list, and for pastor to know who is sick and shut in, please contact the church office. May God bless you richly for giving to St. Timothy and our associated ministries. We encourage you to continue giving through our website by clicking the donate button, or you can download and use the Zelle app by using our church's email address, sttimothy at hotmail.com. Also, you can utilize the U.S. mail or the church's mail slot. Contributions of any amount are always welcomed and very much appreciated. Indeed, reading is fundamental. Join the St. Timothy Book Club for all ages pre-K to 12th grade and adults. Sign up in the REL Ministry Center today. Attention church family. The church is seeking a church safety officer, security officer to fill a recent vacancy. This is a part-time position that supports the church Monday through Sunday on a rotational basis with other CSOs. Interested parties are asked to please contact the church officer at the church office at 219-977-0079 or email us at sttimothy at hotmail.com. Referrals are also welcome. Thanking you in advance for your assistance. Please listen to the following community announcement. Free virtual seminar, Stay Heart Healthy and COVID Safe, Tuesday, January 25th, 5 o'clock p.m., Heart Care During COVID-19, presented by Dr. Mihas Kodinchuri, 
The COVID-19 pandemic has not diminished the need for people to maintain good heart health. Dr. Conan Cherry will share useful insights into preserving your heart health during this pandemic and beyond. To reserve your space, you may call 1-888-909-3627. The late Katie B. Hall, former U.S. Representative from Indiana, was best known for sponsoring legislation and leading efforts on the floor of the U.S. House in 1983 to make Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a national holiday. The late Representative Hall will be honored this afternoon at First Baptist Church, 626 West 21st Avenue, Gary, Indiana, at 3.30 p.m. Our beloved Pastor Jackson will be giving the invocational prayer. The church office will be closed on Monday, January 17, 2022, in observation of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. To my church family, thank you so much for your prayers and your well wishes during this time of grieving. I love you all, Brother Blair. Special thanks to Pastor Jackson and Shirley Moorhead. Thank you, St. Timothy family, for your heartfelt condolences and support for my family on the death of our mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, great-grandmother, and great-great-grandmother, Mrs. Pinky Barron. Your cards, flowers, and well wishes were greatly appreciated. Special thanks to my December group members for their support and l, &L caterers for accommodating us in short notice for her repast. Please continue to pray for our family. So very grateful for your kindness, Dr. Steve and Jerry Simpson. The youth will meet virtual on Wednesday, January 19th for Wow and Out starting at 5.30 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. Pastor Kern will be sending out an email to all parents for the Zoom link. We look forward to seeing your child virtually. The flowers on the altar are in memory of Alzada Steele, a dedicated mother, grandmother, educator, and choir member. Alzada strongly said the last words, move Jesus, and on November 22, 2012, he did just that. She would have celebrated her 81st birthday on January 17. Her presence is greatly missed, but her strong spirit continues to live on through her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Submitted with love, Moses, Jamia, Jayla, and Jazz. Amen. And that concludes our announcements for the morning. At this time, we would like to recognize our visitors. We are pleased that you chose St. Timothy as your place of worship today. It is our sincere hope that you would come and visit with us again. I did not receive any visitors' cards. If there are any visitors, will you please stand and be recognized at this time? No visitors, and now Pastor Jackson. Just a few um, additional um, announcements. On Monday, February 7th, uh, we'll begin uh, the nominating uh, committee. And so we're asking all presidents of, of the auxiliaries and, um, and birthday groups to um, put on your calendar February 7th, uh, 6 p.m., uh, be in person and virtual um, for the uh, initial meeting of the nominating committee. You know that we're uh, moving uh, we do our uh, e trustee elections um, in uh, April, and so that's the beginning uh, process of that. So if you are a president of any um, uh, ministry of our church, auxiliary of our church, please uh, put that uh, February 7th at 6 p.m., and we'll make sure it's in the bulletin uh, for next week as well. 
The church annual meeting will be on Sunday, April 24th, um, and we usually have it right after our uh, uh, morning worship. And so like we did last time, we'll um, have a little um, cake and punch um, between, no, we do some chicken wings uh, in between uh, the service and, uh, and our meeting. And uh, so we'll try to start the meeting about 1.30, but we'll give you more information as we get closer uh, to our church annual meeting. Uh, United We Stand, there is a, um, a House bill, um, 1187, and I'm sure many have um, seen emails and or have heard um, some talk about it. And so there's a flyer that says, please uh, use your voice, call, write, email the leaders in Indiana to let them know that the citizens who live in Gary deserve an elected school board and the union should not uh, be destroyed. Uh, Gary residents uh, should not be denied the same rights and privileges given to uh, every other, uh, as every other community in Indiana. Uh, the takeover of the Gary Community School Corp uh, must end. So there's this um, protest, if you will, in regards to opposing that um, uh, HB uh, 1187. Uh, and so I have gotten a few calls in regard to what um, uh, my position is and what I will do as the pastor of our church and what our church, how we're going to respond. And my initial um, thought uh, is to uh, put together a, a list of names, petition, if you will. And so those that are uh, opposing that, you want to, uh, we want to sign the petition um, after service is uh, completed in the back of the REL Ministry Center. Uh, we'll have those sheets available that you can sign on. What I'm going to do is add a cover letter to that and, uh, and send it to um, Representative Todd um, Houston, uh, the Speaker of the House, um, also Eter Attorney Justin uh, McAdam, and, uh, and, uh, and who is the President of um, the um, uh, DUAV, and, uh, and then there's a, um, another person of uh, Representative uh, Tim Brown as well, and so we will send those emails out uh, with the cover letter uh, to those individuals uh, expressing our voice. Um, and I think it's important, and we fail sometimes to realize, uh, I think we think that church is just uh, for coming and worshiping and so forth, but our history, and today is, this weekend is, is certainly relevant, uh, where we had Dr. King and others uh, who's, who used the pulpit and the church uh, to be a voice uh, to address all injustices that related to uh, African Americans and, and related to um, uh, females as well uh, for, for rights. Uh, so we want to uh, continue the fight and not be silent, but as my, um, my kids would say, uh, Dad, we gotta stay woke. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means, right? We, got, we have to stay awake. Um, and sometimes when we sleep or the church sleeps, uh, that's when the enemy gets real busy. Uh, because we are silent, and so we want to certainly express um, our voice uh, in this time. I want to make mention of that um, in our community there is a transition of one of the great uh, trailblazers um, in this area, um, and so we want to make mention of Pastor Meredith uh, from the Clock Road uh, Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Uh, Ferris uh, D. Evans uh, had passed away. And so his, um, uh, the arrangements have been Friday. A celebration of, of tribute, public viewing will be from 12 noon to 7 p.m. And then on Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. will be a, a continuation of public viewing. And then at 11 a.m. will be his homegoing celebration uh, service. Everything will be held uh, at Clock Road uh, Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church. And I have reached out to uh, the pastor, um, the son, and, um, and expressed our condolences on behalf of our church. Um, and, um, and he gave me at that time the arrangements. And so we want to keep that congregation and certainly the Evans family uh, in, our, in our prayers. Um, and again, certainly we want to keep um, uh, Janice Austin's family in our prayers. You know, she was a dear, beloved member of our church um, and worked very hard. Um, in, um, in the office, um, and so as I said to the choir this morning, you know, my heart is heavy, and many of our hearts 
uh, are heavy, such a beautiful spirit uh, that she was, uh, and, uh, and she knew everybody. And uh, when I came here um, uh, and I arrived here as pastor, and I didn't know someone, she said, yeah, pastor, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so sister and brother and cousin, and they related to, so I got to know a whole lot of you very quickly because of Janice, and so we want to certainly um, keep her, uh, her sons uh, in our prayers and the entire family. And I did have an opportunity to reach out to them this morning. Um, and I spoke to her, um, her daughter-in-law and, uh, and, and gave our condolences and, uh, and expressed our um, deepest sympathy and prayers uh, uh, certainly to them. And we'll be reaching out a little bit later um, and giving them time to, to grieve. You know, grieve, grieving, you know, it, it, you have to have time to process and grieve. Uh, and it's okay to grieve. Um, knowing that we serve a God, uh, we knowing that she had a, uh, her faith was strong in the Lord, um, and she believed in God all the way to the end. And so we just want to um, keep her, um, her memory certainly with us, and we'll keep you informed uh, with any information that we have as the family begins to, um, to put together her homegoing service. Those that are uh, present, uh, the, again, our envelopes, contribution envelopes are available. So after service, please be mindful of uh, picking up your envelopes. If you uh, know someone, you, you may want to pick up their envelope for them. Again, that's fine, but make sure they know you're picking it up. And make sure you deliver it uh, certainly to them uh, so that they can give. We have, you have been um, a blessing in 2021 in the, in, the, in the life of the church as far as giving. And we want to continue that spirit of giving um, in this year of 2022. There's so many things that uh, we need to do and have to continue doing. And it's uh, each and every one of us that come together with our resources, our financial resources, and our gifts and our talents of serving. Uh, and as we come together as one body, uh, we're able to do a whole lot. And so first of all, I want to say as pastor, thank you for your service and your dedication from last year and we're going to pray that God keeps us together and God, that God will give us provisions throughout this year. And I'm just looking for a wonderful, great, prosperous year, not only for the church, but for each and every one of you. And know that I love you uh, and God loves you more. We're going to ask at this time, um, since there's no visitors this morning, that means everyone here uh, belongs to the church. You belong here, do you? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is wave at your neighbor and your fellow member and of St. Timothy and just say good morning and God loves you and so do I. Those that are viewing, uh, we love you and, and uh, we thank you for tuning in. Those on our telephone uh, call line, prayer line, uh, we love you as well and we thank you for listening in on this morning. Those on our Facebook pages, uh, we encourage you to uh, share uh, the service this morning as we uh, include someone that may be sitting home um, and, uh, and may not uh, have a connection or affiliation with the church. And you can witness this morning by certainly hitting the share button on your Facebook page and that will certainly um, um, embrace and, um, and, and allow someone else to uh, tune in this morning to our services. So please go ahead and do that for us and we'll be so uh, grateful. We're going to ask uh, Pastor Curran to come and he will give us our offertory uh, statement and, um, and prayer. Um, then follow that, we'll have our ministry, ministry of music will come and render us a, um, a selection. And oh boy, we're like, uh, we're moving along this morning. Uh, it's about almost 1140. That means I can do a sermon for two hours. <laughs> wow. All right, Pastor Curran's going to come. And those <clears throat> that have entered into the sanctuary have already given, there is still an opportunity for everyone to give, whether you're viewing on Facebook Live or whether you are viewing on the website, you can give through two entities, and that the first entity is through the app called Zelle. And you can download that app and uh, give to the church's email, that's sttimothy at hotmail.com, or you can go on to the church's website, and you can click on the Donate and Giving tab and give your offering 
your uh, tithes, your contributions through there. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Amen. And if you don't like to give, clap your hands. No. <laughs> Amen. So we do uh, love to serve God, and we are glad that we are able to give because God first gave unto us. I think some, some people just now catch up my joke. <laughs> and so God first gave to us, so why should it be so hard for us to give back to him? Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you and we love you. We praise your holy name. Lord, as we, have, as we give unto you, we ask that you bless it. The seed that we sow, we ask that we may reap a harvest from it, not to be boastful nor bragful about it, but to tell everyone that you are a blesser and you've been blessing us time after time after time. So God, the seed that we have sown, Lord, we ask that it is, that it produce a great harvest. In Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. amen. Also, if there are any youth in the sanctuary right now, if you will follow me to the REL Ministry Center so that we may have youth church.
Our scripture lesson this morning, our Bible study this week, has been centered around the Gospel of John, chapter 16. And I would encourage you in your own time of study, and meditation, that you would read the entire chapter. But for the purpose of this morning, as we glean into God's word together, let me start at verse 20. Again, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, starting at verse 20. This is a story, a narrative of Jesus. And as he has conversation with his disciples, he tries to move his disciples from grieving or from grief and turning their grief into joy. Verse 20, he says this, Jesus speaks, and he says, tell, I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. And so with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. And in that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. and Your joy will be complete. Go down to verse 33. Jesus concludes his conversation with his disciples by saying this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And may the Lord bless the hearing of his holy word. There is a story that's told that's entitled, Say Something. A pastor was doing a funeral the first week of his new appointment to his church. And therefore, wasn't able to say anything at all about the man whose body was in the casket. And so he asked for those present to share. He said, is there anyone here who can say anything good about this man, there was silence in the room, like right now. Again, the pastor went on and he said, is there someone who can say anything at all, at least somewhat positive about this man? And again, the room was silent. And the pastor said one more time, he said, is there anyone who can say something pretty good about this man. And again, there was more silence in the room. Finally, an older gentleman stood up and said, well, preacher, he wasn't as bad as his brother, and it was his time. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word, and as we glean into your word, we thank you, O oh Lord, because your word encourages us and it gives us the strength and it gives us what we need when we need it. And so, God, speak to us through your biblical writ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to focus the attention on verse 22 
where he says, so with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. And I want to just talk for a few moments on this thought, now is your time, now is your time. Even though the joke that I shared had to do with uh, a deceased person that no one or the pastor didn't know too much about, uh, and there was silence in the room, but it lets us know that as we live life that each of us will have our time. There's a time in which we are born, and there's a time in which we transition. Notice I didn't say die, but those who are in the Lord accept Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives, that there is a transition that even though the body goes to the ground, we know our soul is transitioned to the eternal resting place in him. And as we look over these years, and particularly through um, the, uh, this weekend of celebration as we hold the memory of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., there was a time for him to be born, and for he was born on January 19th of 1929. But then it was also a time in which he also had to transition. And we know that his assassination on April 4th of 1968. We look at his birth of 92 years later, and we look at the fact that, that he had experienced many troubles, but then those troubles, some of them, turned to some sort of peace. Experienced grief, and also there were some joys in his life. But thousands of people all over our country are pausing today and specifically on tomorrow to celebrate the seasons of life in which Dr. King had lived. lived. An American Baptist minister, an activist who became the most visible voice and a leader in the American Civil Rights Movement in 1955, all the way until his assassination. But King advanced civil rights through nonviolence and his civil uh, disobedience, and he's inspired by his Christian faith and beliefs and his nonviolent activism that was drawn from Gandhi. As Dr. King was the son of an early civil rights activist, and most may not know this, that his father was also an activist and a preacher. But it's now that Dr. King's time has rolled on. He's eternal rest. We still, in this time in which we live, we still remember the experiences during his time, he experienced the grief of racism and segregation and bigotry and lynchings, the unequal rights for blacks and women, uh, the injustices with voting rights and other inequalities. It was his time to experience a season of grief, which caused him and other leaders to fight the, uh, nonviolently against the evils of segregation and racism and to see the joy of equality in our lives as blacks over the years. But now as the chronos of time, as the sequence of time has passed now 54 years later from Dr. King's death and 92 years later from his birth, we are still in this season of time, still dealing with racism, still dealing with uh, lynchings of black young men, just not on trees, but we're being forced down on the ground with a knee on his neck for eight minutes and 15 seconds till he died or gunned down over a traffic violation that should have just ended up with a ticket, but death was the outcome. It's been 54 years from his death, 92 years from his birth, 
and we're still dealing with discrimination. According to the Pew Research Center on March 1st through the 7th of 2021, it indicated that 46 blacks have been discriminated against, 30% Hispanic, 27% Asians versus 14% whites. It has been 54 years from Dr. King's death, 92 years from his birth. And we're still fighting to keep our voting rights as this House bill of 1187 is trying to introduce, which will take away voting rights from citizens of Gary to elect their own school board. And even as we cross over into this new year, bring the spirit of joy, grief, has also found its way over into the new year and is lurking around us. But Jesus in this, this gospel of John chapter 16, verse 17 through 33, teaches his disciples that grief in which they are to take that experience and turn it into joy. Many may say that's more easier said than done, but he helps his disciples because they are in a moment in which they are, are grieving and they are in grief because of the troubles of this world. Uh, it's in the Gospel of John chapter 1 where Jesus begins to say that, he says, uh, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word uh, that was with God, it became flesh and dwelt amongst us. There's a purpose of the Word coming to us. There's a purpose for the Word, uh, which is Jesus the Christ, uh, to dwell amongst his people. God knew that there will be turmoil in the world. He knew that there will be chaos in the world. And, and he had to send something, someone, if you will, that would embrace, someone that would encourage, someone that will save, someone that would give comfort to those that need it. And so there we find in the Gospel of John chapter 14, where Jesus reminds his, his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. He says to them, in other words, don't let this world worry you. Don't let the trials and tribulations of life discourage you. But he says, let not the inner being, let not your innermost parts be troubled by the things that are on the exterior that one experiences in their life. Then we get to chapter 16. And in chapter 16, they are still embracing the grief. They're still embracing the hard times and Jesus reminds them again in this chapter he says you've got to yes you have to go through because I Christ Jesus have gone through as well I had to also carry my cross and am carrying my cross but but because you believe in me because you follow me as disciples as believers you too will have to go through some tough times in your life and these disciples had to deal with mourning over loved ones. This, these disciples had to deal with uh, the chaos of evildoers. This, these disciples had uh, to deal with uh, the fact that uh, there were those who hated them because they loved Christ, because they stood for holiness, because they were righteous disciples, uh, because they believed in God. And there were those that hated them because they believed in God. But Jesus promises them. He comforts them. He tells them in the text. He says, uh, but you can't not only let your heart be troubled, but take that grief that is coming towards you and you have to turn it into joy. That's a word for us in this time in which we live because we all experience some sort of grief. May I suggest to us, number one, that it's your time of grieving. We have to embrace grief. And that's what it says in verse 22. He says to them, so with you, now is your time of grief. There is a season of grief that all of us have to go through. Grief is the response to loss when you have lost something. And all of us have lost something. Oh, let me help you. Uh, if you ever have lost some money, I've been in that situation where I tried to hide money from my kids so they won't take it or get it. And, uh, and I hid it from myself and lost it. 
uh, we've all been in a situation of, of losing something. Uh, maybe it's your portfolio and your financial portfolio and, and it has decreased because of, of the society and what our country is faced with and, and now you're losing dollars. Uh, we all have some sort of loss, loss of a job, loss of a house, loss of a car, materialistic things we have lost. People have taken things or stolen things maybe from you or borrowed, if, with, if you will, and never returned. We all have had some kind of grief, and grief goes beyond the material, materialistic things, but we all have also lost grief, as far, have gone through grief in the loss of someone, someone that we have loved dearly, someone that was, we formed a bond with or was affectionate with, and, and, and therefore their loss have, has caused us to grieve. Our grief can cause us to be emotionally, uh, 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 emotionally responding. In other words, we respond emotionally. I know this morning uh, that the death of uh, our dearly beloved Janice, it really touched me this morning. And as a brother came and uh, said, uh, shared with me uh, moments in, in the Bible study this morning, and, uh, and I tried my best to hold myself together. But when you start thinking about when folks are, have been good to you and you have a good relationship with and, and they show their love and you show their love back to you, it's hard uh, to, to take something like that and be able to process it right away. Why? Because we miss that individual. We miss that loved one. And each of us have lost someone that has been dear to us, someone that have, we have loved very, uh, very, very fondly. And and, and yet their presence is not here, but we know that they are with the Lord. But yet there's something that happens within us because of the human side of us that we respond emotionally. There's an emotional loss. And there is a physical piece to this that if we're not careful and don't deal with our grieving uh, or, and, and, and process our grieving, that it can affect our physical being. When someone has uh, transitioned or, or when you've lost something and if you have not coped with it, it can affect your health. You can find yourself being stressed out or being depressed or closing yourself in a room and, 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 and moving yourself away from people. You'll find yourself uh, 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 of their certain types of things that are happening or will happen uh, to your body and, and you'll find yourself having aches and pains and you're trying to figure out where all this is coming from because we have internalized our grief and never released it and let it go. There's a physical piece to it. Then there's a behavioral piece to this. If we're not careful and we hold on to grieving and we don't process it and don't, and don't help ourselves to get through the grieving process, we behave in such a manner that folks will look at you crazy and think something's wrong with you. Uh, if you, you find yourself snapping. You never used to snap, but all of a sudden you find yourself snapping at people. You gotta think about what am I holding on to that's causing me to do this type of behavior. Uh, behavior is another piece to that. Uh, then it's a spiritual piece that when we hold on to the grieving, we get stuck in grieving that uh, we begin to stop praying. We don't pray like we used to pray. We, we, we don't go to church like we used to go to church and we don't have a desire uh, to worship God like we used to worship God. We turn ourselves from the church and from God and from the word of God because the grief has gotten so uh, deep. But Jesus promises us in the word of God that we will have a season of grief. We will have a season in which we will have to go through uh, some trying times times, but yet the issue is, is how we go through the grieving process. It says it will be your time of grieving. But here's the hope for us. Thank God for hope. The hope in the text is that he says that even though it's your time of grieving, he says, but th th there's, no, there's, no con there's no period there. There's no end of sentence there. He, he, he says to them that even though there's grief on this side, but there's gonna be some joy on that side. He, he says to them in verse 22, in part B, he says that, that, but I will see you again and you will, here it is, rejoice. And no one will be able to take away your joy. It's time for joy. He tells them there's a season of grief, but then he says, but then there's gonna be a season of rejoicing. 
there's going to be a season of rejoicing. He says, in matter of fact, in, in whatever you have been experiencing, disciples, he tells them, is that there is going to be something beyond your distress. There's going to be something beyond your grief. There's going to be something beyond your trial and tribulation. He says that if you can handle this, I promise you there's going to be some relief. And I come to tell us this morning is that in 2021, we all have gone through some grief. But I come to tell you in this new year of 2022, we have to hold on and rejoice because the Lord has given us a spirit of rejoicing. That even in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of circumstance, in the midst of triumph, that we ought to rejoice. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. In other words, you're not rejoicing by yourself, but you're rejoicing in the Lord. How, what do you mean, Pastor? What does that mean to rejoice in the Lord? We're rejoicing in the one who can save us. We're rejoicing in the one who can deliver us. We are rejoicing in the one who can pull us out and bring us through. We are rejoicing in the one who is able. Don't you know God is able? He's able to keep us from falling. He's able to hold us together. He's able to withhold us and help us to stand when we can't stand. He's able to even right now as I'm preaching the word and my heart is heavy, but he's able to hold us so that we can do what we need to do. God is an able God, and that's why we ought to be able to hold on to not only grief, but hold on to rejoicing. Matter of fact, if if I got to grieve, I'm going to grieve and rejoice. Well, Pastor, how do we grieve and rejoice? Uh, well, we can be in the situation, but doesn't mean that we have to react as we're in the situation. In other words, that even when things get bad, we can still praise God in the bad times. We can praise God in the troubled times. And that's what the lesson is this morning that Jesus is giving to his disciples. That we never know when grief is going to come. We never know when trial and tribulation is going to come. But when it comes, you ought to be, uh, you ought to be ready to rejoice, uh, uh, rejoice in the fact that I am with you. And the Bible says in verse 22, he says, I will go away. But he says, I will come back again. And that's the hope. The hope is, is that even though we feel as if Christ is going away, but he is coming back again. Well, what does Jesus, what is he saying to his disciples? Because didn't he not say he'll never leave us nor forsake us? So what do you mean, Jesus, that you're going away and you're coming back again? Well, he's saying that in the physical piece of him, the physical part of him, the humanity of Jesus has got to have to go away. But he said, but when I come back, when I come back for you, when I come back again, you will rejoice because when I come back, I'm going to have, I'll have the power to save you. I'll have the power to deliver you. I'll have the power to be able to trans, uh, to transcend you uh, 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 over, over to uh, another, another realm of the spirit. He says, when I come back, uh, no matter what state that you're in, that I can turn your state around. He says, I will come back again. Again, And that's what the believer holds on to. That's what helps us to deal with death. That's what helps us to deal with those who have trans, who have died in the Lord. That's what helps us with those who have, have worked and, 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 and served the Lord all their life and God has now come back for them. We know that when we serve God and when we worship God and when we hold on to our faith that one day he is coming back again. Matter of fact, the saints used to say back in the old church, he says, he's coming back again for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Aren't you glad that he's coming back again and when he comes back, uh, he's coming to save our soul. So we got to get ourselves right. We have to get ourselves together. We have to get ourselves to a point where we know that God, that we cannot make it without you. We cannot do it without you. We cannot live without you. We cannot do anything without your presence. We need your presence presence, oh God, to be over our lives, over our minds, over our hearts, everywhere we walk, everywhere we talk. We need your presence, God, to, to bridle our tongues and to strengthen us for the journey. We need your presence, oh Lord. Yes. So there's a time for grief. There's a time of joy. But here's the last thing I give you. It's a time to ask God for what you need. Verses 23 and verse 24, uh, he says to his disciples, he says, 
In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. See, this time they've been asking Jesus, the disciples have. They've been asking the physical uh, nature of Jesus, uh, the humanity of Jesus. Anything that they had stand in need of, they've been going to him. But he says, there's going to be a time where you're no longer going to ask me. He says, I tell you the truth, my father will give you whatever, whatever you ask. Here it is, in my name. Yeah. He says, so your, your, your petitions are not going be, to be directed towards me because physically I'm not going to be with you. But anything that you're going to need from going on from me, you have to go to the Father. When you go to the Father and ask, he will make sure that whatever you're asking for, it shall be done. He says, you got to go to my daddy. I, I, th I thought about when I read that verse a few times in my study time, and I thought about quickly that uh, when uh, my, my children, particularly now that they're older and they need stuff, they, they don't go to... Uh, grandma, they don't go to their friends or uh, their cousins, but when they need something, y'all know when they need something, we're not talking about $5 or $10, when they need something, they, they go to daddy, they text daddy, and my, my son got this word now, and sometimes I got to figure, you know, it makes me old, he said pops, and I'm trying to figure out, it makes me like I'm a grandfather or something, I'm, I'm like I'm 44 years old, you call me pops. Uh, but the language of these young people these days, and, and he said, Pops, can you, can you send me some bread? And, and, and I said to myself, uh, what is he going to do with bread? And, and so I called him back. I said, Son, I said, what, why do you want bread? You, you want me to send you bread? You go down to the grocery store and get you bread. And then he said, Pops, I ain't talking about bread that you eat. I'm talking about bread as far as money that you spend. He said, he said, send me some, some bread. But the point I'm making, he came to his daddy because he knew that his daddy would give him his bread. And all I'm saying to us is that when we need something from God, we have to go to our daddy. We have to go to God and, and ask God. And, and when we ask God, because God already knows our circumstance, and matter of fact, he knows it before we even ask him. But, but sometimes he just wants us to ask him anyway. Come to me. Come to your daddy and ask me what you need, and, and I'll give it unto you because everything that I have is within me I can release it and I'll release it in the atmosphere I'll, I'll release it in your life and so whatever you stand in need of this morning if you in person if you're viewing online if you're listening on the conference call prayer line the Bible says the songwriter says call him up and tell him what you want and if you call him up you can call him any day any time any moment his line is never busy but when you call on the Lord, he'll be right there. Don't you know this morning when I woke up this morning, I didn't know what to expect this morning. All I knew is I'm going to the house of God to give God the praise and worship him with the saints. Uh, oh, but when sometimes things will attack us as we go into the sanctuary, but as we come to church, we ought to thank God for everything. Thank God for our life. Thank God for strength and thank God for all that he's done. But every now and again, we've got to ask God. And when we ask God, know that he will provide. Now, don't ask him and act like he ain't going to do it. But when you ask him, you've got to have faith in him to know that he will do what he said he was going to do. Don't you know his word says it'll never return back to him void? That means that what we ask God, it may not happen right now, but we got to believe God is going to happen. Uh, we've been praying for something last year. Some of y'all been praying uh, for two months, three months, five months, and now we're into a new year. You still praying for the same thing, but I come to tell you, you got to pray without ceasing. You got to pray without stopping. You got to pray until the breakthrough happens. You got to pray till the healing happens. You got to pray till the child is saved. You got to pray till the children come back unto God. You got to pray until the, the financial matters change in your life. You've got to pray until that back pain begins to resolve. You've got to pray until the cancer goes away. You've got to pray until the enemy is at your footstool. You've got to pray until the things turn around for your good. Is there anybody in here this morning that declare and decree I've got to hold on to my faith in my prayer unto God because I know that's the only connection I have with God is to talk to him through prayer. Have a little talk with Jesus. Uh, 
tell him all about your problems and he'll heal your faintest cry and he'll answer by and by. Well, pastor, when is the by and by? I don't know when it is going to be for you, but you've got to trust God and know that by and by, when the morning comes, the morning will come. Night will not last always, but there is a morning, y'all, and when the morning comes, we can then rejoice because the Lord has done some great things. Oh, we ought to thank God for the power of prayer. I believe in asking God. I believe in asking God for healing. I believe in asking God for, for whatever I need in order to make it on tomorrow. I realize that I can't do it by myself, but I got to get on my knees every now and again. I've got to turn over the plate every now and again. I got to fast and pray and know and trust that God is going to do it for me. Is there anybody here that says, I'm here today because I've been praying. My children are still alive today because I've been praying. My grandchildren are still saved today because I've been praying. My job is still secure because I've been praying. I've been able to retire with a good retirement because I've been praying. I've been praying for this virus that it won't attack me and kill me. I've been praying that it won't pull me down and, and destroy my lungs. I've been praying. Is there anybody here that says, I've been praying and even when I was sick, I still prayed to God. Even when I was on my bed of affliction, I still prayed to God. I never gave up hope. I never gave up my faith, but I held on to my faith in him. And so in this new year, uh, I'm going to close with this last verse of verse 33, where it says, he says unto him, he says, uh, that I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He says, I'm, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you about grief. I'm telling you about joy. I'm telling you all of this that you have to ask my father uh, for what you need uh, and, and ask it in my name. He said, I'm telling you all this so that you can have peace. And we need peace. We need the peace of God. And the peace of God uh, is on our lives because we realize that there is joy at the end of the tunnel. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's rejoicing at the end of the tunnel. But he says in here in his word, verse 33, in this world you will have trouble. He didn't lie. Y'all had some trouble, right? He said, in this world, Jesus told them, you're going to have trouble. But here is what I rejoice on. He says, but take heart. What does that mean in the Greek? Literally means he says, take courage. And courage is, is the choice and the willingness to confront agony. It's to, is the willingness to confront pain, to confront danger and uncertainty. It, it's, 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 to take courage is to, is to have strength in the face of pain and grief. We have to have courage. In this new year, uh, the word this morning is that it's time for the believers, it's time for the church to have courage. And we're in this society today that we need courage. And if we don't have courage, this world's going to beat us up. But as long as the believer has courage, uh, we can withstand anything. He says to them that you have to have this courage. There's, there's a time for grief. There's a time of joy. There's a time to ask God for what you need. And then lastly, there's a time to take courage. I believe this weekend of Dr. King, uh, this holiday that comes every year, some look at this holiday as a day off from work. Some look at the holiday as a day that we can go to the mall and go shopping and catch those sales. But there are those of us who realize it's not just a day off from work. It's not just a day we can catch the sales in the mall. But it's a day that we honor a man who left a legacy, a legacy of courage. But Dr. King wasn't the only black man who left 
a legacy of courage. But Jesus left a legacy of courage. He was born in a manger amongst the animals. That's courage. He performed his first miracle at Canaan, at the wedding feast. That's courage. When he didn't send away the crowd of 5,000, and 5,000 was just the men, that's not counting the women and the children, so it was more than 5,000. He didn't send them away hungry, but he fed them with five loaves and two fish. That's courage. When he healed the blind man and raised the dead on the Sabbath day, that took courage because that was against the law. But when he was brought before Pilate and charged, and given the sentence, was pronounced guilty, that was courage. And then when he was nailed to a cross and he hung there for all humanity, that's courage. So now in this new year, if Christ can do all of that for us and given us an example of courage, I submit to us, saints, now it's our time. It's our time to take courage. It's our time in this new year. To, it's our time to not only take courage, but it's our time for healing. This new year, it's our time to fight for justice. It's our time to have joy because he says that this joy that he gives that no one can take it away. And that's when the uh, psalm, psalmist says, I think what Shirley sees it says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. It's our time in this new year to be happy and to rejoice. It's our time in this new year to be successful and to succeed. It's our time in this new year to be better and to feel better. It's our time to prosper and be victorious. And it's our time, people of God, to, to stretch our faith. Now, I know some of you said I stretched it last year and God has caused things to happen for me to stretch my faith. But uh, I tell you, in this new year, God's going to cause things to happen for you to stretch your faith even the more. Stretch your faith. He, in this new year, it's time for us to grow in God and, and to get a deeper understanding of his word, to go to Bible study and Sunday school and to stretch out our knowledge of who God is. It's our time in this new year to be faithful in the house of God, uh, to be able to serve the Lord. Whatever your ministry is, uh, it's your time to step up to the plate and do better than you did last year. It's our time this this year to be able to be motivated for Christ, motivated to serve, motivated to worship, motivated to give, motivated not that, that, that the spotlight is on you or anybody has to call your name, but you're doing it because it is of the will of God and that God has put on your heart to do. It is our time in this new year to grow in God, to fast and pray. Uh, it's our time uh, to serve God. It's our time to go back to school, those of you, and get your degree. It's our time uh, to love. It's our time uh, for those of us that are single to find a soulmate. It's our time uh, to be able to uh, lead our grandchildren and our children uh, to the Lord. It's our time to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's our time in this new year to not let the devil think he's got victory over us. Uh, it's our time in this new year to not look defeated it but look victorious. Uh, is there anybody here this morning that said it's my time in this new year to stand up for righteousness. Uh, it's my time in this new year to raise my hands and give God the glory in spite of my circumstance. I will bless the Lord at all times uh, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, that means I'll praise him in the good times. I'll praise him in the bad times. I'll praise him when I'm up. I'll praise I praise him when I'm down. I praise him when things look good. I praise him when things don't look good. I praise him when I'm happy and I praise him when I'm sad. Is there anybody here this morning that can declare in this new year, it's my time to shine. 
It's my time to shine, and I'm not shining uh, for you, but I'm shining for Christ. Uh, is there anybody that can testify that I've been through some tough times in my life, uh, but in this new year, I'm not reflecting back uh, on what was, uh, but I'm reflecting on what will be, uh, and what will be uh, is that God has given me the strength uh, and the know-how and the wisdom and the knowledge to take care of myself, uh, and not only can I take care of myself, but I'm so bad that I can take care of my family, take care of my friends, take care of my church member, take care of those that are in need. God has blessed me to a point where whoever I come in contact with, I can be a blessing unto them because God has been a blessing unto me in this new year. It's my time to not take my resources and to throw it away or waste it, but take my resources and bless somebody that doesn't know Christ. Uh, bless somebody that head is down. Bless somebody who is uh, poor in spirit. Uh, bless somebody that may not have what I have. Uh, is there anybody in this new year that will declare that I am on the battlefield for the Lord uh, and I'm going to serve him until I die? Yeah. It's my time yeah. in this new year to experience grief, experience joy, experience the petition unto God, and it's my time to take courage. When you leave here today, encourage somebody and just tell them it's your time. If they're complaining about life and complaining about everything that they're going through in their life, Turn it around for them. Take the, take the negative and make it a positive. Don't let folk keep giving you negativity and then you just take it. That, that stuff becomes poison after a while and get in your system and before you know it, then you start speaking negative and you start acting negatively. But, but Jesus is teaching his disciples that you gotta take it Turn it around and make it a positive. Yeah. Take the grief, make it joy. Whatever your grief is this morning, whatever you're grieving over, make it joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us stand all over the sanctuary. There's a song that says, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And if we're ever going to experience the joy of God, we got to know he is the center of our joy. There may be someone here this morning that may need to accept Christ as Lord and Savior over your life. This is the time. That's the word this morning. It's your time. It's your time to accept Jesus. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Romans, he says, to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord. The Bible says, and you shall be saved. There may be someone here this morning that needs to accept Christ in your life. Now is your time. Second call is I'm already saved but don't have a church home and I want this church to be my church home where I worship and I fellowship with the saints and I serve God in the church and also in the community. If that's the call on your life, we bid you to come. We welcome you to come. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Would you come my brother, would you come my sister? What do I do, come down the aisle to the altar and we'll meet you at the altar. There may be someone that's viewing this morning on our broadcast or listening on the telephone line, conference call line. We invite you to call the church, say I accept the Christ as Lord over my life and I want to be a part of the ministry. We welcome you. Where I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, 
I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my church, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As I give the benediction, we won't be mindful that those that are part of the uh, St. Timothy Community Church um, book club, uh, that you can uh, pick up your books on the way out. Um, they have everything situated for you. Those that want to sign the petition, uh, I'm gonna ask that. Um, I think I saw her this morning, uh, Sister Pam Johnson. Uh, if you would see her, she'll uh, be, be at that first table there. Uh, and if someone else can help and assist her, uh, to, if you want to sign up uh, for the petition so we can get that, uh, respond to that as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the worship experience this morning. And oh Lord, we thank you that you have allowed us to see this new day that we have not seen before. And Lord God, we have been encouraged this morning through your word that this is the time for us. And whatever you need us to do, O oh Lord, we're going to, we're going to do it, O oh Lord. We're going to listen to your voice. And God, as you lead and direct us, and as you lead and direct me, O oh Lord, as I lead your church, and as I lead your people, we ask, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit to reside not only over us and around us, but, O oh God, it within us as well. And so, God, as we leave here, we are encouraged, O oh Lord, to face whatever our circumstances are. We encourage the oh Lord to face whatever injustices that may be in our world and society today. We are encouraged, oh God, to be able to deal with the mourning and the sorrows of this world because God, we know that you are with us. And so now may the grace of God, may his power, may his spirit rest, rule, and abide in us now and forevermore. And the people of God say together, amen.